Shalom, shalom, family. We are at it again. Hold on one moment. All right, there we go. Shalom, shalom, family. We are at it again. As always, I want to give all honor and praise and glory to the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Holy One of Israel, who is Jesus. I am Cassius Israel, a.k.a. Kazak ben Yehuda. I represent the walls of Jericho Biblical and Historical Studies. Hebrews in the hood media and of course I got my reader here big homie Yurt Peace. and so what we're going to go over today brothers and sisters is that we're going to finish off the um, series so to speak I guess you could say that of the lesson that we've been doing over the past couple of weeks which is the fruits of the spirit and the laws of salvation but this will be part three the Fruits of the Spirit and the Laws of Salvation, Part 3. So let's do a re real recap, um, uh, a quick recap real quick. And what we were discussing is that you have, um, you need the Fruits of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, in order, for, uh, in order for all the other stuff to count, you need the Fruits of the Spirit. So if you don't have that, then everything else is vanity. However, you still need the law. You can't just have the fruits of the Spirit either without keeping the law, brothers and sisters, right? And so you have to have both in order to get into the kingdom, in order to get salvation, and to be saved from the wrath of God. Because that is what we are trying to avoid at all costs. So what we did is we went over the fruits of the Spirit, and then we started dealing with the uh, circumcision law, then the dietary law, and then the sacrificial law, but that's where we stopped in the middle of the sacrificial law. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick this back up with the beginning of the new covenant, and then we're going to finish everything else uh, off. So what you got to understand is the law has five parts. This actually makes um, this actually makes dealing with the law a lot easier, knowing that because then there's a repetition in the Bible. Um, of things that you have to do to get back to your kingdom, right? And then there'll be laws that when you get in that kingdom, the laws that were for the land of Israel, specifically for the land of Israel, will be reestablished as well, brothers and sisters, right? But these are the things that are universal. And so when we talk about the five parts of the law, these are things that it doesn't matter if Israel was a nation or not. These were the things like the dietary law. What we're going to see is you see that in Noah's time, right? Well, that's what we did when we did the dietary law. You saw it back in Noah's time, just like circumcision. You saw that back in Noah's time. Uh, I mean, uh, Abraham's time. Um, with the moral law, you saw that back all the way going back to Adam. You know what I'm saying? So these are things that are universal to Israel and and, 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 and well the more the moral law is is universal in general but the other laws are specifically for the nation of Israel if we want to point out culture some type of culture that is specifically tied to the nation of Israel and then we have of course uh, sacrificial law dealing with animal sacrifice but if you're under the priesthood of Melchizedek which is Jesus then you know you're covered by the blood of Jesus. You rely on his blood to atone for your sins and not the blood of bulls and goats, which is what we are, which is what we'll be going over today as well. Then you have the holy days and feast days, which are called the ceremonial laws, which we'll be going over today as well. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start this with the new uh, dealing with the new covenant. And why did the new covenant come and to play into the first place, brothers and sisters. So we're going to start this at Hebrews, the seventh chapter. Hebrews, the seventh chapter. And we are going to start at verse 11. Hebrews, the first chapter, uh, seventh chapter, I'm sorry. Hebrews, the seventh chapter. And we're going to start at verse 11. Now there's a question that's about to be asked. That is why we deal with jesus instead of dealing with the blood of bulls and goats to atone for our sins brothers and sisters whenever you get there my brother you can go ahead and read 
If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, mm -hmm. for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that th that another priest arise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? All right, so these questions are actually going <clears throat> to be answered, brothers and sisters. So it says, if therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, right? Because the priest administers the law to the people. What further need was there that another priest should arise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? So we want to pay attention to that question because we are going to answer that question. Go ahead, my brother. Verse 12. For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change uh, also of the law. Go ahead. For, for, for he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, or which no man gave attendance at the altar. Go ahead. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Right. So you notice that because of that, the entire priesthood had to change, brothers and sisters. Because under the Levitical priesthood, it was the order of Aaron. And if you weren't a son of Aaron, you were not considered a priest or a high priest amongst the nation of Israel, right? We're all priests, but then you had to set apart priests, which were the sons of Aaron. Go ahead, my brother. And it is yet far more evident that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest mm -hmm. who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. And that carnal commandment was animal sacrifice or fleshly commandment, right? It was nothing spiritual about it, brothers and sisters. It was something that God accepted so that you could show him you wanted to atone for your sins, some type of atonement of blood for your sins. You wanted to be, you wanted to replace yourself with something else so you didn't have to die immediately for your sins, right? Keep going, my brother. Verse 17, for he testified, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now remember, the question was, if therefore perfection were of the Levitical priesthood, what was their need for another priesthood? I'm paraphrasing, right? And so we're going to see why that there was, there was a need for another priesthood, brothers and sisters, right? Let's go to Hebrews, the eighth chapter, deal with the new covenant. Hebrews 8. Hebrews 8 and verse 8. Hebrews 8 and verse 8. Whenever you get there, my brother, you can go ahead and read. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the day is come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Matter of fact, go to verse 7 and read down. Let's okay. answer the question. Go ahead. For it is that for it is, uh, for if that first covenant had been faultless. Then should no place have been sought for the second. So it's constantly telling you it wasn't perfect, right? And there's a reason why it wasn't perfect, brothers and sisters, right? So it says, for if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. So there was fault in the first covenant, and that's why it had to be a new covenant, which was which is what we're going to search out. Why? <laughs> Go ahead. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Uh -huh. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the days when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, uh -huh. because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, said the Lord. So it's not going to be another Levitical priesthood, basically what he's saying, right? He said, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continue not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. So under that first covenant, you had the Levitical priest, and you had animal sacrifice, but this was not perfect. So a new covenant had to be uh, created. Uh, go ahead, my brother. For this is the for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of <coughs> Israel after those days, uh, said the Lord. Uh -huh. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. So, what was the difference between this covenant and the last, uh, uh, the first covenant? The first covenant, brothers and sisters, that the law was written on two tables of stone, and it was put on the ark 
that the Levitical priest carried around. That did not do anything. And then you also had to wear fringes. You also had to uh, have <clears throat> the frontlets over your eyes and write the commandments on your doorposts. However, that was fault. That, that there was fault in that, and there was fault in it because it still didn't keep you from breaking the covenant. You still broke the covenant. So now we got to find out a new way to make sure you don't break the covenant, which is writing the laws in your heart and in your mind. What does that mean? That means that once it's in your heart and your mind, it becomes second nature in your behavior, brothers and sisters, right? And so once it's in you like that, once that spirit is in you, then you ain't got to worry about breaking the covenant at that point, right? Which will lead you to eternal life, at least breaking it on purpose. Uh, go ahead, my brother. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For all shall know me from the least to the greatest. And of course, we know that is going to go all the way to the Father's kingdom, brothers and sisters, right? So when Christ died, we started the new covenant, and it will not be complete until we get to the Father's kingdom, because that's the only time no man will have to be taught, brothers and sisters, when everybody is either God or you're in the lake of fire. You knew what was going on, right? Uh, keep going, my brother. Verse 12, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Go ahead. And that he said, the new covenant he had made of the first old, now that which decayeth and what's old is ready to van vanish away. All right, so we're going to keep investigating more detail on why was the Levitical, pre why was the priesthood changed, brothers and sisters, right? If there was perfection in the first one, why was there a, necess a necessity to have another one? If that first one was faultless, what would be a reason to have another one, right? So let's go to the next chapter, Hebrews, the ninth chapter. Hebrews, the ninth chapter, and we're going to start at verse 1. Hebrews, the ninth chapter, and we're going to start at verse 1. Whenever you get there, my brother, you can go ahead and read. Then verily the first covenant and also ordinances of divine service in a worldly sanctuary. So we have to, if we had to depend on the worldly sanctuary, brothers and sisters, we're done because we don't have the, the it was destroyed in 70 AD. We don't have that worldly sanctuary. We're not even in the land, brothers and sisters, right? So we're scattered in these different parts of the land. And if we needed the sanctuary to atone for sin, then we are in trouble, brothers and sisters, right? Keep going. For there was a tabernacle made, the mm. first, wherein was a candlestick, and a table, and a showbread, which is called the sanctuary. Uh huh. Go ahead. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, mm -hmm. which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, mm -hmm. wherein was the golden pot that had manna, and Aaron's rod that budded. And the tables of the covenant. So these are the. This is how the first covenant was initiated, <laughs> brothers and sisters, on two. Like I said, on two tables of stone, in the ark of the covenant, in the sanctuary, right? That you actually needed in order to atone for sin, brothers and sisters, right? Uh, keep going, my brother. And over it, the cherubims of glory, shadowing the mercy seat, of which we can uh, of which we cannot know speak particularly. Mm -hmm. Now, when these things were thus ordained, the priest went all, always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. Talking about the Levitical priest, they went into the first tabernacle. They were ordained going into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God or the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he's specifically talking about atoning for your sin, brothers and sisters. Right? Keep going. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year. Not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. Now we're going to see you needed blood in order to atone for your sins. That's why it says that he didn't come without blood. He came to offer himself, which was the blood that we rely on for the atonement of sin, brothers and sisters, right? Keep going, my brother. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, mm -hmm. while as the first tabernacle was yet standing. Go ahead which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect 
as per as pertaining to the conscience. Oh, so we're getting somewhere. So why wasn't the Levitical priesthood perfection? Because it could not fix your conscience to stay away from sin. Right. And so you're sacrificing all these uh, bulls and ghosts, brothers and sisters, but it could not take away the sin, the presumptuous sin, brothers and sisters. So there was another covenant that was made, and that covenant was to write these laws in your mind and in your heart so it can be second nature so that you will not sin. Right. And that is the purpose of doing all of this. Right. Keep going. Which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings mm -hmm. and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. Right. See, so we see that these carnal ordinances was the drink offerings, the meat offerings and things like that. Not that it was uh, obsolete or not that it was anything wrong with it, brothers and sisters, but this is the fleshly stuff. So the spiritual stuff was actually having this stuff in your behavior and manifest in your behavior that is what the first covenant was uh showing you that you had to make sure this stuff was in your behavior i gotta make a new covenant because you broke the covenant the original covenant the first one with your behavior right so it's got to fix your behavior your conscience cannot go bad brothers and sisters dealing with this word right so if your conscience ain't right then it's not written in your heart and in your mind right keep going my brother hebrews 9 verse 11 but christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle mm -hmm. not made with hands that is to say uh not of this building so it's not about the actual building in the sanctuary brothers and sisters what is it about go ahead neither by the blood of goats and calves but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having or having obtained uh, eternal having obtained eternal redemption for us right so if it was about the sanctuary like i said earlier we would be in trouble brothers and sisters right so it's about recognizing who he is so that you can get forgiveness for your sins right uh skip down to verse Skip down to verse 21 and go ahead. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of his ministry. Uh huh. And almost all things were by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. So without the shedding of blood, brothers and sisters, there is no remission, right? So anybody that don't believe in Jesus, they got to have some type of blood to atone for their sins so if you're not doing it according to the levitical priesthood well how are you atoning for your sins then so it's people that do not recognize jesus as who he is and hey if that's that's what you want to do that's what you want to do i wouldn't suggest that i would suggest you really look at this thing and see jesus for who he really is but the problem is, is if you don't see this, brothers and sisters, and you claim to be an Old Testament Hebrew, then you have to still find out, well, what am I going to use to atone for sins since I do need blood as the remission for sin? I need some type of blood for the remission of sins. If you don't have that, your sins are still upon you. You call yourself keeping the law with sins upon you, brothers and sisters. It's not going to get you nowhere, right? <laughs> All right, so now let's go to the next chapter, Hebrews 10, and we're going to keep seeing the same um, thing being repeated as far as why this priesthood had to change, brothers and sisters, right? So Hebrews, the 10th chapter, and we're going to start at verse 1. Hebrews 10 and verse 1. Whenever you get there, my brother, you can go ahead and read. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the comers there unto perfect. Right, so perfection, or in other words, becoming God, brothers and sisters, having eternal life, becoming an immortal being, right? On the good side of the kingdom, of course. The sacrifices could not turn you into that, right? The only thing that can turn you into that is if the law is second nature, within your heart and it manifests in your behavior right so doing all this stuff year by year continually is not making you or turning you into god or giving you eternal life right go ahead my brother 
for them would they not have ceased to be offered mm -hmm. because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sin. Right, because these people, they go into the priest, they go in to give up their uh, 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 they goats and their bulls, atoning for that sin, but they still got sin on the brain. They thinking, well, I got, shoot, I got 50 goats. I can sin 50 times before I run out of a goat. But that's not making you purge your conscience, brothers and sisters, right? So that is vanity. That's carnal, right? That was that is what was uh, that is what was happening in with the old covenant, brothers and sisters. People got to that point where now they looking at how much livestock they got, and they thinking that they can sin because they got all these goats that they can sacrifice, right? But the problem is, is what if you got somebody that doesn't have as many goats as you? See, that's why I says you can't give a ransom to God, brothers and sisters. So I got all these goats. I got a thousand, let's just say, I got a thousand goats and bulls that I can uh, uh, sacrifice to atone for my sin. But this other person has two. So you mean to tell me they're just out of luck after that second one? They're just out of luck. But the one that got a thousand, they can keep sinning on and on until they run out of bulls and goats. That's not how it's going to work. That's not how it works. But that's how people lived, brothers and sisters. So he had to get rid of that system and bring another one into fruition, right? Um, keep going, my brother. Verse 3. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. Go ahead. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. And that is the answer in a nutshell. Why wasn't the Levitical priesthood a, a, a perfect because the blood of bulls and goats could not take away sin out of your conscience so you could stop doing it, right? Because we're going to see that the Most High said, obey my voice. I don't want these sacrifices. I want you to do what I tell you to do and stop going, against, uh, stop going contrary to it, right? Keep going, my brother. Uh, wherefore, he said, wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Mm -hmm. If burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast not had no pleasure. Right, so he didn't have no pleasure in burnt offerings and sacrifices sin, even though he accepted it back in those days, brothers and sisters. That don't mean he told you to do it, right? So we got to understand this. That was not his pleasure. His pleasure was for you to obey his voice, brothers and sisters, right? Keep going, my brother. Uh, and, okay, verse 7. Uh -huh. Then I said, then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me mm -hmm. to do thy will, O God. Go ahead. But when he said sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, thou wouldest not. Mm -hmm. Neither has pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. So the, all, the law, which we're doing, the sacrificial law, is offered for the atonement of sin, brothers and sisters, right? But... The sacrificial law is still in place, but now we look towards Jesus as our ultimate sacrifice instead of the blood of bulls and goats. So the law is still there. It's just the priesthood has changed. So the the the, the delivering of the remission of blood, uh, brothers and sisters, or the purging with the remission uh, or the remission of sins with the purging of blood came from Christ instead of the blood of bulls and goats, right? Keep going, my brother. Verse nine, Hebrews ten, verse nine. Then he said, "Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God." Uh huh. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. So I'm gonna take away the Levitical priesthood, at least for uh, uh, the moment, because it's gonna come back when we go back into the land. We're not gonna get into why that is today, but it's gonna come back. So he got rid of that altogether, <laughs> and then now he is the high priest. We got rid of the blood of bulls and goats, and now his blood is what we use for the atonement of sin, right? Keep going. Verse 10. Uh, by the which we by the which will we are sanct I'm sorry. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Go ahead. And every priest standing daily, ministering, offering oftentimes the same sacrifices. Which can never take away sin. So it's all about taking away sin. That's why when Christ came to the earth, brothers and sisters, why did he come? That he may take away sin, brothers and sisters, when he was manifest into a physical body, right? Keep going. But this man 
after he had offered once sacrifice for sins forever, mm -hmm. sat down on the right hand of God. And these are not presumptuous sins, meaning that you can go off and sin because you want to sin and then yes. you end up dying. You you bought in trouble, brother, since you in danger of judgment at that point. We're talking about a repentive soul or an ignorant soul. That is who he died for. Not the soul that's going to keep sinning because they, they enjoy the pleasure of the flesh, right? Skip down to verse 26 and go ahead. Because this is a reality that a lot of people don't realize in the Christian community, right? Keep going. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaining no more sacrifice for sin. So you hear that? You don't have sacrifice for willful sin, brothers and sisters, right? You got judgment coming. But once again, you do not have to indulge in the willful sin like, oh, man, I didn't just mess up this, that, and third. No, you can correct yourself and repent, right? And that is the, the point. He died for the ignorant and the repentive soul, brothers and sisters. And if people would get that in their head, they would stop trying to make excuses about their behavior and just do what God say, uh, says, right? That's all we got to do is do what God says, right? Keep going. But a certain fearful looking for judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversary. Uh-huh. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. So he despised Moses' law, and it wasn't Moses' law. It was God's law. But see, Moses was the priest, brothers and sisters, that administered the law. That's why they even call it Moses' law. It really wasn't his law, but he is the priest that established the law for the nation of Israel, right? Keep going. Of how much sore punishment, suppose ye, shall he be uh, thought worthy, though had trodden underfoot the Son of God, mm -hmm. and had counted the blood of the covenant, mm -hmm. wherewith he was sanctified, an unholy thing, but, and, had done despite, and had done despite unto the Spirit of grace. Go ahead. For we know him that has said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. Uh, verse 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God, brothers and sisters, right? So you want to repent, and really you just want to do what he says, right? But if you mess up, repent. That is what this thing is about. It's not about continuing into your willful sin because your conscience <laughs> has not been purged right that's why it was no reason to keep doing the blood of bulls and goats because people's conscience was not purged you're just killing animals at this point and innocent animals ain't did nothing to be killed they're being killed to cover your sins and that's not what we uh are here for right so let us let us continue now let's go to jeremiah the seventh chapter Right, because he said he did not desire this um, um, practice as far as the animal sacrifice and having the blood of bulls and goats. Let's go verify that. Jeremiah, the seventh chapter. Jeremiah, the seventh chapter. And we are going to start at verse 21. Jeremiah 7 and verse 21. Jeremiah 7 and verse 21. Whenever you get there, my brother, you can go ahead and read. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, put your burnt offerings unto your sacrifices and eat flesh. Well, just, just, eat, just eat the animals, right? Just eat the animals that you're going to sacrifice because I don't have any pleasure in the animals that you're bringing me to sacrifice because you're not understanding that your conscience needs to be purged. That is when it's really in effect. So I'm going to make it to where you can't just do that, right? you got to correct your behavior. Go ahead. For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. So didn't we just read that in Hebrews 8? He said he was going to, <clears throat> excuse me. He said he was going to make a new covenant, but not according to the fathers that he brought out of the land of Egypt. Or not according to the covenant that he made with the fathers that came out of the land of Egypt. What was part of that covenant? Animal sacrifice, brothers and sisters. Right? Keep going. Verse 23. But this thing commanded I them, saying, mm. Obey my voice, 
and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people. Go ahead. And walk and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, mm -hmm. that it may be well unto you. Right. And so you can go back into First Samuel, I believe that's First Samuel, the fifteenth chapter, and they were going to war with uh, 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 the Edomites, brothers and sisters, and they were supposed to take them out, and they were supposed to kill all their livestock as well. What they ended up doing is keeping the livestock for sacrifice. But they disobeyed God's word. Is, is y'all following what I'm saying? They disobeyed God's word, took the sacrifices to bring them to God, to offer the sacrifices unto them. That doesn't make any sense if you're going to disobey his word, brothers and sisters, right? So you're going to keep sacrificing your livestock or you're taking livestock you're not supposed to take trying to sacrifice to the Lord. And he told you, no, just obey my voice. You disobeyed me to get animals to sacrifice. He doesn't want that, right? And so that's why we have a new covenant. Go ahead. Uh, first, okay. Verse, verse 23. But this thing I command them. I, uh, okay, verse 24. Uh -huh. But they hearken not, nor incline their ear, but walk in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart mm -hmm. and went backward and not forward. So this is what happened. You doing all of this. But it still says, but they hearken not unto the voice of God, nor incline their ear, but walked in the counsels and in the imaginations of their evil heart and went backward and not forward. So you're going backwards, but you're still sacrificing animals. You're not going forward into the obedience that God wants you to do, brothers and sisters, right? Keep going. Verse 25. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt, Unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, da uh, daily rising up early and sending them. Right. Yet they hearken not unto me, nor incline their ear, but harden their necks. They did worse than their fathers. So now I got these prophets that I'm sending to you rising early in the morning to warn you about your behavior, but you still keep sacrificing animals. Right. No, that is not. <laughs> that's not what the Lord wants. He wants you to obey his voice, brothers and sisters, right? Continue, my brother. Therefore, thou shalt speak all these words unto them, mm -hmm. but they shall not hearken unto thee. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. That's, ain't that sad? Now, God is sending, and, and that even goes for us. That's why I don't get too uh, uh, caught up. And if somebody does not want to receive the word, because look what God said. You're going to go to these people. You're going to preach to them. You're going to preach my words, but they're not going to hearken, and they're, they're going to shut their ears to my word, right? So you might as well not get all up in the frenzy, brothers and sisters, because you can't wake somebody up, right? He said most people are not going to hear this, so we have to keep that in mind, right? Uh, go ahead, verse 28. But thou shalt say unto them, this is a nation that obeyed not the voice of the Lord their God, mm -hmm. nor received the correction. Mm -hmm. Truth is perished and is cut from out from their mouth. I want I want this to be uh, uh, specified because whenever you try to tell somebody about what they're doing that goes against God, what do they say? You judging me? You this that and third? You can't judge me. Verse twenty eight says, "But thou shalt say unto them." So God is telling you. This is what you're going to say to the people, right? He's saying, this is a nation. This is what you're going to say. This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God. So if I go out there and be like, y'all some disobedient children, you can't judge me. It says that, he, it just said that he said, go out there and tell the people this, right? Then he said, this is a nation that is that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction, Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. That is bad, brothers and sisters. He's not already telling you, you go out there and you're going to preach to the people. They're not going to listen to you. They're not going to hearken unto my words. And you're going to tell them, man, you are a disobedient people. You will not obey the voice of the Lord. You will not receive correction. And truth is perished and cut off from your mouth. Right? But once again, they're going to sit here and tell you, that you're judging them. So don't don't mind that. Just know what the Lord has told you, brothers and sisters, right? Let's keep going. Let's go to Psalms, the 40th chapter. 
Psalms, the 40th chapter. Psalms 40, and we're going to start at verse 6. <clears throat> Psalms, the 40th chapter, and we're going to start at verse 6. Psalms 40 and verse 6. Whenever you get there, my brother, you can go ahead and read. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mm -hmm. Mine ear hast thou opened. Burnt offerings and sin offering hast thou not required. All right, go ahead. Then said I, lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me. Uh huh. I delight to do thy will. O oh my God, yeah, thy law is within my heart. Right, so thy law, and if you can see, this plan was already in the uh, uh, thought about in the Old Testament, brothers and sisters, right? Because the salvation of God was from the what? The foundation of the world, brothers and sisters, right? So all of this stuff was already on his brain, right? Uh, keep going, verse 9. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Uh, lo, I have not refrained my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. Right, so you're just like he told in Jeremiah, go preach to these people to obey me. So in this one it's saying, I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. That's what you're supposed to do to the people. Preach them righteousness according to God's word, brothers and sisters, right? But as we can see in verse 8, this was the same thing that was said in Hebrews, the 10th chapter. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. It's supposed to be within your heart because once again, it's got to be second nature and to be manifest in your behavior, brothers and sisters, right? That is what we want, right? Uh, keep going, my brother. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. Mm -hmm. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy, salva thy, thy salvation. Mm -hmm. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. Right, so I'm not holding the truth in unrighteousness. I'm letting the people know about your great mercy, your kindness, or your, and your loving kindness, brothers and sisters, right? Uh, verse 11, go ahead. Uh, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Withhold not thou thy tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let thy love and kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. All right, so that is what we want. But in order for that to happen, you got to obey his voice and let these laws be written in your heart and in your mind, brothers and sisters, right? So let's see ultimately what he wants us to do in this particular case, right? Especially now that we're under the order of Melchizedek. Go to Psalms 141. Psalms 141. Now remember the sacrificial law, uh, the, remission, uh, the remission of sins when it comes to the sacrificial law has to be purged with blood regardless. That is the law. Now you notice that Christ came to fulfill that law. If he did away with the law, why would he have to have died to give you blood to, to, to be the remission of sin, brothers and sisters. There's something to think about. Psalms 141. Psalms 141, and we're going to start at verse 1. Psalms 141, and we are going to start at verse 1. Once again, that's Psalms 141 and verse 1. Whenever you get there, my brother, you can go ahead and read. Lord, I cry unto thee, make haste unto me, give ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee. Go ahead. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense, mm -hmm. and lifting up my hands as the evening sacrifice. Oh, let my prayer now. So what do we do? We pray to the Lord when we want to receive forgiveness. He didn't already died. He didn't already gave his blood, but it, he came into the tabernacle, brothers and sisters, to do it one time. So now, how do we trigger him to forgive us? We have to repent, confess, confess, go into prayer, and ask for forgiveness. The blood is already shed. Now that's what we have to do, right? That's why it says, let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. So prayer is... To the uh, uh, to the Father through Jesus' name, the High Priest is how you get atonement for sin, brothers and sisters. Right now, what are the people that have no sacrifice going to do in this case? Right, it's something that's got to be thought about. Right, so now let's move on. That was the sacrificial law. 
Let's move on to the ceremonial laws, which are the holy days and the feast days, brothers and sisters, right? Let's go to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Now, notice, if you go back into this and if you're watching these lessons over, notice that besides, like, the agricultural laws and uh, things like that, the laws that are for the land, brothers and sisters, you're going to see a pattern of things repeat over and over based on circumcision, dietary law, the moral law or the royal law, the sacrificial law, and the ceremonial laws. These are the things that we keep uh, 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 universally as Israelites, regardless of the um, differences, brothers and sisters. We know we have to have those five components in order to receive salvation along with the fruits of the spirit, spirit and how you deal with your neighbor, right? Uh, Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, and we're going to start at verse 1. Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, and we're going to start at verse 1. Leviticus 23 and verse 1. Whenever you get there, my brother, you can go ahead and read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, uh -huh. Concerning the feast of the Lord, which he shall proclaim to be holy convocation. Even these are my feet. Once again, uh, I, I know our teachers and our elders always point this out, so I'm going to point it out as well. These are the Lord's feasts, not the Jews' feasts. The Lord's feasts, right? So we want to we want to make that apparent. Go ahead, my brother. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. Mm -hmm. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord and all your dwelling. Go ahead. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their season. So these are the feasts of the Lord, right? On these holy days of the Lord, right? Let's see the first one. Go ahead. In the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. So you got the Passover that is first, brothers and sisters, right? Out of these feast days, right? But we're not going to get into all this detail. We're just going to point out the basics when it comes to this. So leave your marker here at a Leviticus 23. And we're going to go to Deuteronomy the 16th chapter. So we got the first holy day. Which is the Passover. Deuteronomy 16. And verse 16. Deuteronomy 16. And verse 16. We're going to read one verse. And whenever you get there, my brother, you can go ahead and read. <clears throat> Three times in a year shall all the males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. Mm -hmm. In the feast of in the feast of unleavened bread, uh -huh. in the feast of weeks, and the feast of tabernacles, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Alright, so we got the feast of unleavened bread, we got the feast of weeks, which is Pentecost, and then we have the feast of tabernacles. So let's do this in order. You got the Passover. We, we went through that. You have the Feast of Unleavened Bread. You have Pentecost, right? So that's three. Then let's go see these other ones. So we know we got tabernacles there, so we can count that. But we're going to do this all in order, right? Let's go back to Leviticus 23. Levit uh, we're back to Leviticus 23, and we're going to pick this back up at verse 23. Leviticus 23 and verse 23. Leviticus 23 and verse 23. Whenever you get there, my brother, you can go ahead and read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month of the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath, a memorial of the blowing of the trumpets, and holy convocation. So the, the memorial of the blowing of the trumpets comes after Pentecost. So Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread, Pentecost, and the blowing of the memorial of the trumpets, right? Uh, keep going, my brother. You shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, mm -hmm. Also in the tenth day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. Oh, so now we got the day of atonement. So Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread, Pentecost, the blowing of the memorial of the trumpets, and then we got the Day of Atonement, brothers and sisters, right? Keep going. 
It shall be in holy convocation unto you. And you shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Go ahead. And you shall do no work in that same day. For it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you by the Lord your God. Keep going. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among, all, from, uh, from among his people. Go ahead. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. Mm -hmm. You shall do no manner of work. It is a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and you shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even. From even, to e from even unto even, you shall celebrate your Sabbath. All right, now skip down. So now we got the Day of Atonement. Skip down to verse, let's see. Skip down to verse 36 and go ahead. Seven days you shall offer. I'm sorry. You know what? 34. Read from 34. Speaking unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven uh, for seven days unto the Lord. Uh -huh. On the first day shall be in holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. Go ahead. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Uh -huh. And on the eighth day shall be in holy convocation unto you. And ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly. And you shall do no servile work therein. All right, so now you got tabernacles. And then now we got the eighth day there, right? So now let's look at this. You got Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread. Pentecost, blowing of the memorial of the trumpets, Day of Atonement, Feast of Tabernacles, and the eighth day. These are your seven annual feasts throughout the year, brothers and sisters, right? And so we see these things. These are the Lord's feasts, not the Jews' feasts. So the law not is not done away with, and we do still have to keep these laws even being under Christ, brothers and sisters. Because the only thing about being under Christ is the atonement for our sins. All five parts of the, this law is still intact. It's just Christ came to replace the Levitical priesthood. That's the only thing that changed, brothers and sisters. And we have to be mindful of that so we don't get cut off. So we understand how we are supposed to obey the voice of God, brothers and sisters, right? And that is all of uh, what we're supposed to do in a nutshell, right? And we got to remember these things, right? So let's go to Second Chronicles, the second chapter. Second Chronicles, the second chapter. Second Chronicles, the second chapter. And we're going to start at verse 4. Second Chronicles, the second chapter, and we're going to start at verse four. So we're going to see this uh, being um, being discussed. Second Chronicles, the second chapter and verse four. Whenever you get that, my brother, you can go ahead and read. Behold, I build a house to the name of the Lord, my God, to dedicate it to him and to burn before him sweet incense and for the continual showbread. Uh, and for burnt offerings morning and evening mm. on the Sabbath and on the new moons and on the solemn feasts of the Lord our God. It is an ordinance. It is an ordinance forever to Israel. Go ahead. And the house which I build is great for great is our God above all God. So now that we're building this house, we are building this house in the uh, uh, We're building this house in the name of the Lord, says Solomon. He said, behold, I build a house to the name of the Lord, my God to dedicate it to him and to burn before him sweet incense and for the continual showbread and for the burnt offerings morning and even evening on the sabbaths that's all seven sabbaths and on the new moons brothers and sisters we're going to get into that in a minute and on the solemn feast of the lord our god this is an ordinance forever to israel right Matter of fact, let us go see that. Let's go to Numbers, the 10th chapter now. Numbers, the 10th chapter. We're going to read one verse. Numbers, the 10th chapter. 
Numbers, the 10th chapter, and we're going to read one verse, which is verse 10. Numbers, the 10th chapter, and verse 10. Numbers, the 10th chapter, and verse 10. Whenever you get there, my brother, you can go ahead and read. Also, in the day of your gladness, and in your solemn days, in, your, in the beginnings of your months, uh -huh. you shall blow uh, with the trumpet over your burnt offerings, and offer the sacrifices of your peace offerings. That they may be to you for a memorial before your God. I am Lord your God. Now the new moons are not a Sabbath, brothers and sisters. I'm gonna make that I wanna point that out. The new moons are not a Sabbath, but it, they are holy days, right? And so what they normally did is that they came and they brought burnt offerings and peace offerings every month to the God of Israel, brothers and sisters, right? And then you would you'll end up seeing, which we me and my brothers tend to do when we can, especially, we try to do it every uh, new moon, but sometimes it doesn't happen. But Israel starts started making customs of feast during the new moon. You can start seeing that in our history, especially when you get to places like 1 Samuel, the 20th chapter with Jonathan and David and Saul. And you saw that they were having a feast on the new moon now is that in the law can we say that that is in the law and that we have to keep a feast according to the law no you cannot say that brothers and sisters right but israel did make a custom out of this which is why you'll see uh brothers and sisters <coughs> keeping a feast on the new moon but what they were doing that they had to do according to the law was come with burnt offerings and peace offerings right so it's best for that day Hey, every month, let me go into prayer and talk to my God and pray that he forgives me for the things that I have done, brothers and sisters, right? And offer him peace offerings, or in other words, you're offering peace unto him. Anything that you think that will bring wrath upon you out of your behavior, you want to have a peace treaty with God, brothers and sisters, right? But that is due to repentance. Right, so we're not dealing with the cardinal ordinances, brothers and sisters. These are spiritual things dealing with your behavior. It's all about your behavior, right? If you really get what this is, uh, uh, what this is showing you, it's all about your behavior. It's all about fixing your behavior to the standard of God, brothers and sisters. Right, that's all it's about. That moral law. That moral law. At the end of the day, it's pointing back to the moral law. The one law that you're definitely going to have to keep, even in the Father's kingdom, because you're still going to have to know how to tr love God and love that your 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 neighbor, your fellow neighbor, right? You will have neighbors in the Father's kingdom, right? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, right? We might be in another body, but we're still uh, a family, right? So let's go see that confirmed in the New Testament. Let's go to Colossians, the second chapter. Colossians, the second chapter. Colossians, the second chapter. And we're going to start at verse 6. Colossians, the second chapter. And we're going to start at verse 6. Colossians 2 and verse 6. Whenever you get there, my brother, you can go ahead and read. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. So walk ye in him, mm -hmm. rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, mm -hmm. as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Go ahead. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, mm -hmm. after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So this should be your foundation. If I understand that I got to keep all five parts of this law, brothers and sisters, and then I have to have the fruits of the Spirit and love my neighbor. I have to have charity. I have to have all of these things. Then somebody, uh, nobody can come along and tell me about this vain philosophy or the, this, this philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world. They can't come to me and deceive me with that because I know what I have to do live, living in Christ. I still have to keep the law, brothers and sisters, right? So if I know that and understand that and, and, and understand that I still need the advocate to get me through the doors of the kingdom, it's not by my own merit of keeping the law, 
but through the forgiveness of the one that died for me, brothers and sisters, then I will get what I'm supposed to get as long as I'm paying attention and as long as I'm willing to be obedient and correct myself if I'm wrong. Skip down to verse 16 and go ahead. For by him were all things created. Verse 16. Oh, yeah, verse 2 and 16. There we go. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath day. Oh, so we see that the Sabbath days, plural, those seven Sabbaths, the and then he's saying the holy days, because there are some days that are not feast days, brothers and sisters, technically, but they're holy days. They're not the three feasts, I should say that they, they're not the three feasts. But they are holy days. But he also has the new moon there, right? So we understand that the new moon was still being kept even in the New Testament, brothers and sisters, right? Or it's still being acknowledged, right? So we want to know that this is part of those same ceremonial laws, brothers and sisters, that we have to keep even unto this day, right? And so there is a conclusion. That was all of it. That was the ceremonial laws. So what we're going to do is there's a conclusion in the whole matter when it comes to when it comes to uh, uh, rewards and consequences of not keeping these laws, brothers and sisters, right? Let's go see that. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter. Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter. And we got three more scriptures after this. Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter. And we're going to start at verse 1. <clears throat> Deuteronomy the 32nd chapter and we're going to start at verse 1 whenever you get there my brother you can go ahead and read give ear O ye heavens and I will speak and hear O earth the words of my mouth go ahead my doctrine shall drop as the rain my speech shall distill as the dew and the small rain upon the tender herb and as the showers upon the grass right so He's saying, give ear, O ye heavens. He's telling the heavens to give ear. Brother says, that's how serious this is. Just like if you go into Jeremiah, the uh, second chapter, he's telling the heavens to be horribly afraid. When he starts doing that, you can tell he's serious about the message that he's conveying, brother says, right? Then he says, my doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall shall distill as the dew as the small rain upon the tender herb and as the showers upon the grass so everybody out here got some type of wind of doctrine brothers and sisters right but it doesn't matter what doctrine you've accepted if it ain't the lord's doctrine then it's not a doctrine it's a doctrine of devils brothers and sisters right if it's not the lord's doctrine it's not a doctrine of devils and the lord's doctrine is i gotta keep the commandments of god i gotta have the faith in jesus I have to have the fruits of the spirit and how I treat my brother. I have to have charity and all of these things, right? And so if we don't do that, we're not operating by the doctrine of Christ. And we have to understand that, right? Verse three, go ahead. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto your God. Right. And so because we're publishing, starting with, um, 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 in this particular case, with Moses saying this, we're publishing the name of the Lord. We're putting him out there when we preach this gospel, brothers and sisters. That's why his doctrine is going to be heard and drop like the rain. That's why even the heavens are going to listen when he speaks, brothers and sisters, because that's just what it is with the power of God, right? Keep going. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right as he. Right, so, but there's a problem that our behavior started changing, brothers and sisters. And let's see that, uh, let's see that change. Go ahead, skip down to verse 15 and go ahead. But Jeshurun wax fat and kick, mm -hmm. and are waxing fat. Thou art grown thick, mm -hmm. thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God, then he forsook God which made him. And lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. Which was Christ, brothers and sisters, right? Jeshurun, or Israel, waxed fat, meaning they got <clears throat> cocky. They got arrogant. They started thinking that the stuff that they were doing was based on them, brothers and sisters. 
right? Instead of the power of God, right? Just like it says in Ezekiel 16, they thought that their beauty came from them. Or I should say, we thought our beauty came from us, but the beauty came from the Lord, brothers and sisters. That's why the nations was looking at us. That's why they were marveling at the wisdom that we possess, brothers and sisters, because of the Lord, not because of our minds, not because of our own fleshly mind, but the Lord, brothers and sisters, right? Keep going, my brother. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. Mm -hmm. With abominations provoked they him to anger. Go ahead. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. To gods whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly up, mm -hmm. whom your fathers feared not. Go ahead. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art uh, unmindful. That has forgotten God that formed thee. Mm -hmm. And when the Lord saw it, he offered them. Because of the provokings of his sons and of his daughters. It says, when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them, brothers and sisters. Meaning that he greatly hated them. He hated them to the extreme because of the behavior. How would you feel if God really, really hated you? People don't think about that. They don't think God can hate. And that is not the attitude that you should have. That is why it's so much uh, turmoil in the world. That is why it is so many bad things happening because god's hate is running rampant through the world brothers and sisters we got to understand that we really got to understand it his wrath is running rampant through the world brothers and sisters and until you have a repentive heart or if you're in ignorance his wrath is going to touch you brothers and sisters right as far as punishment is concerned his wrath is going to touch you so repent if you know better and you're doing it, repent. That's all you got to do, right? Uh, verse 20, go ahead. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they for they are very forward generation, mm -hmm. children in whom, there, who, in whom is no faith. Then children and then in them that is no faith, brothers and sisters. Children in whom there is no faith, right? So faith, if you see how it was... Faith was in the Old Testament, right? So you didn't have to wait till Jesus came in the flesh to have faith in God, brothers and sisters. Faith was already there. You were supposed to have faith in God regardless, right? And that was Jesus back then. So we always have faith in Jesus since the Old Testament. The only thing that is different is the way we atone for our sins. The way the sacrificial law is now administered, brothers and sisters, or done. That is why that is the difference. That's the only difference, right? Let us continue. Let's go to Deuteronomy the 28th chapter. Deuteronomy the 28th chapter. As a reminder, we as the children of Israel are the sign of what's going to happen if you listen to God versus what's going to happen if you don't listen to God. The blessings and the curses based on the fact that you're not keeping all five parts of this law and you don't have charity in your heart and the fruits of the spirit, brothers and sisters, right? So these are things that we must be mindful of, right? That they were not mindful of. And we got to understand that. Deuteronomy 28 and verse <clears throat> 1. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1. Whenever you get there, my brother, you can go ahead and read. And it shall come to pass that thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So that is the reward for keeping these commandments, brothers and sisters, right? Skip down to verse 8 and go ahead. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hand to do unto do. Uh -huh. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now it's funny because <clears throat> you got all these prosperity preachers that's out there telling you that, man, your business is going to flourish. You're going to get a new house. You're going to get a new car. All you got to do is pay your tithes. Why do they read the blessings of God? They don't never read the actual blessings. And the blessings of God that he gave to Israel, brothers and sisters, is better than what any preacher that I've ever heard try to say God would give you. 
I have never heard a preacher say that you're going to be set upon high above all nations of the earth. Have you? I ain't never heard no, I've never heard a preacher say that. So he's actually uh, dumbing down and he's actually making the blessings not even worthwhile, brothers and sisters. He's giving you scraps. He basically giving you scraps, making it seem like it is a full course meal. That's not the case. You're not telling me that I'm going to rule the world above all nations of the earth. You're telling me I'm going to get a new car. Something pleasing to the flesh. Something that's pleasing to the flesh, brothers and sisters. Uh, skip down to, matter of fact, keep going. Verse 9. Uh, verse 9. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, mm -hmm. as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep his commandments, of the, if, she, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, and walk in his way. Right. So he's going to establish you as that holy people <clears throat> when you start keeping the law, which is holy. That is how you become the holy people, brothers and sisters, right? Verse 10, go ahead. And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. Right. They shall be afraid of you, brothers and sisters. Just like even when Joshua went into the land when he had the battle of Jericho, them folks heard what the Israelites were doing and that they was coming in the name of the Lord, they were scared, brothers and sisters, right? They were scared. Skip down to verse 13 and go ahead. And the Lord shall make thee the head, not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt be, and thou shalt not be beneath, if thou, if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day. To observe and to do them. Right. And so that's another thing. When have you ever heard a preacher said, you're going to be above only? See, y'all got to look at how this stuff is. The preacher's not really preaching prosperity. They're giving you scraps because they know that you're so used to oppression as a people. I give you some little scraps. You're going to take that and make it into a great thing, brothers and sisters. Now, I'm not saying your day-to-day -day blessings are not important because all good things come from above, brothers and sisters. The problem is, is that you're not telling me about this. You're not telling me that keeping the commandments can get this. You're telling me that the law is done away with, I pay my tithes, and I'm gonna get a car in a new house, right? That's all I'm, that's all I'm gonna get. Like even with, when Christ addressed the disciples and they asked them, we have given up everything for you. What are we going to get? In so many words, right? And he said, y'all going to get tenfold or a oh, hundredfold. It was hundredfold. Wasn't it? it was one of them. I'm sorry if I misquoted. But the point is, brothers and sisters, is that he was giving you something tangible he was giving you a promise that he was going to keep something that was actually written brothers and sisters that you can bank off of not something that's coming from the imagination of somebody's heart and they just using two or three scriptures to tell you what's on their mind brothers and sisters that is not what god wants for us right uh verse 14 you can go ahead uh, and thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, uh -huh. to the right hand or to the left, to go to to go after other gods to serve them. Now that was the blessing. So if you keep yourself from doing these things, and you keep those commandments, brothers and sisters, you're gonna get these blessings. But what happens if you don't keep them? Go ahead, my brother. Uh, verse fifteen. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. To observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, mm -hmm. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Go ahead. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. Mm -hmm. Cursed shall thou the, the curse shall be thy basket and thy store. Mm -hmm. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. So I'm looking at this curse shall be thy basket and thy store so we always sit here and uh discuss going back and forth about how black businesses are not flourishing like they should because it's a cursed business without the lord god of israel and i hate to say it like that but that's just the reality otherwise you're gonna have to answer why can't our people 
as a collective, why can't we flourish in our businesses together, brothers and sisters, right? That has to be something to think about. That has to be something to think about. And it's happening on a mass level where you can see other nations flourishing in business, brothers and sisters. Well, they don't have these curses upon them. That is what that is, uh, why that is. Uh, skip down to <clears throat> verse 21 and go ahead. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee until he have consumed thee from off the land, whether thou goest to possess it. Now, if you go and just look up these diseases, brothers and sisters, we on the top of the charts with these diseases, brothers and sisters, right? And so you can see that these curses are playing out right in front of our face, brothers and sisters. The only thing that's going to fix this stuff is if we, if, if we uh, are obedient unto the Lord God of Israel, brothers and sisters, right? Skip down to verse 25 and go ahead. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thy enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them uh -huh. and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. So now you don't, you stop keeping these laws when your enemies come after you. They going to remove you from your land and remove you far from your land into all the kingdoms of the earth. And you're going to be smitten by your enemies. So you're not even going to, when the wars come, you're going to be killed off. Because you didn't obey the voice of the Lord God of Israel, brothers and sisters, right? Skip down to verse 28 and go ahead. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. That's why you don't know who you are in, in essence, brothers and sisters. That's why you don't know what is, uh, 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 that's why you don't know why the things that are happening to you are happening to you. Because you're blind. You're blind. You're mad. You didn't went crazy. Because our people out here going crazy, brothers and sisters. And I know we can all acknowledge that, right? An astonishment of heart. You just can't believe what's going on to you in this nation, right? But once you know, then you start doing the things to reverse this process, right? Uh, keep going, my brother. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. Mm -hmm. And no man shall save thee. And that is exactly what is going on with our people, brothers and sisters. So we better recognize this curse, right? Keep going. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Uh -huh. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt plant a vineyard. And shall not gather the grace thereof. Now, that was happening in a lot of our captivities. But the one that I'm thinking about is, well, the slave master was sleeping with the slave's wife. Right? They build the White House that, uh, uh, that the presidents are currently living in. And they were out there in the cotton fields and things like that. Planting the vineyards, brothers and sisters, for other people to prosper off of. Right? And so that's the first thing I think of when I read that, right? Skip down to verse 36 and go ahead. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Uh -huh. And there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. So you're going to be in all these other religions fighting back and forth about which one is the right one and you didn't forsake the one that was the tr uh, the, the true uh, 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 the true way of life, right? The true way to God, brothers and sisters, right? You f you didn't want to be part of that one, so now you're going to be in all these other lands worshiping these other gods and in these other religions, right? Uh, keep going, my brother. Verse 37, And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations where the Lord shall lead thee. So you, in other words, you're not even going to be known by your original name anymore, brothers and sisters. You're going to have all these pet names like Negro and Black and all this. And then the Proverbs is going to be all these different type of sayings about you and our, uh, uh, and, 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 and our people, brothers and sisters, right? It's going to be all this stuff that shows that you should have just listened to the Lord God of Israel, right? Skip down to verse 41 and go ahead. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters. But thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. And you're going to be looking at this stuff like perfect, perfect examples, the movie Roots. When they was looking at their children being taken by the slave masters, brothers and sisters, and couldn't do anything about it. 
just sit there and watch. That is a curse. If 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 I don't, <laughs> if you don't think that's a curse, then that I don't know what to say, brothers and sisters. Right? Uh, skip down to verse forty three and go ahead. The stranger that is with thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. So if you go into our communities, brothers and sisters. The foreigners in the community are doing better than we are. They're rising higher than we are in success and all of this other stuff, brothers and sisters. Heck, even authority, they're rising over us in these different countries, right? And that is from disobedience, right? Keep going. Uh, he shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. Uh, he shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to to him, right? Because you were supposed to be the finance ears of the planet, and now it's reversed. Now the planet is the financier of you, brothers and sisters, right? And you barely can get anything from that. And you have to, man, they do us, they do us dirty, where if we were doing it, we would have had the law, statutes, and commandments to make sure things were uh, uh, being done in righteousness, brothers and sisters, right? Uh, verse 45, go ahead. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be as destroyed. Mm -hmm. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. All right, go ahead. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. All right, and so now as long as the children of Israel are not in their land. And we're not talking about the people that are over there because they don't fit none of this stuff. The children of Israel, as long as they're not in the land, brothers and sisters, that <clears throat> sign of the curse is still upon the children of Israel, brothers and sisters. So when you see the sign, you know that that's the children of Israel, brothers and sisters, right? Skip down to verse 64 and go ahead. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. <clears throat> From one end of the earth even unto the other. Uh -huh. And there and there shalt thou serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. So he said it again. You definitely <clears throat> going to be scattered into all these lands, and you're going to be worshiping and serving these other gods in these different religions. Like I said, we are doing that. We we, we the best at that. There ain't nobody topping us in, 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 in religious worship, brothers and sisters. Right? And that is why it makes sense that we are the people of God and we needed to obey God and do what he's told us to do, which is to preach to the other nations, right? And and, and, and then making sure that they don't get tossed in the lake of fire, that they can be saved from the lake of fire, right? Skip down to verse 68 and go ahead. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt, thou shalt see it no more again. Mm -hmm. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. And no man shall buy you. So we're going to see what this is all about. And what it is all about is using these laws, statutes, commandments to stay out of bondage. Whether it's physical bondage or whether it's spiritual bondage, brothers and sisters, which is confusion. When you're in spiritual bondage, you're just full of confusion, right? We want to make sure we stay away from this by keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, brothers and sisters, right? So that, let's confirm that that's talking about bondage. <clears throat> Exodus, the 20th chapter. Exodus, the 20th chapter, and we're going to start at verse 1. Exodus, the 20th chapter, and we are going to start at verse 1. Exodus 20 and verse 1. Whenever you get there, my brother, you can go ahead and read. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage, which is the land of Egypt, synonymous with the house of bondage, brothers and sisters, right? So we do all of these things to stay out of the house of bondage, right? Spiritually and physically, right? Spiritual house of bondage is going to be forever, brothers and sisters, which is the lake of fire. And so we want to stay out of either one. The Lord put us into slavery, physical bondage to warn us. If you don't get yourself together, you're going to be in eternal bondage, which is the lake of fire. Right. Uh, right. So let's go to the last place. Sum it all up about the fruits of the spirit 
And if you have all of these things, plus the fruits of the spirit, brothers and sisters, you are on the right track. If you keep enduring into the end, you will be saved, right? That's what he said. And so we got to believe it, right? Colossians, the third chapter. Colossians, the third chapter. And we're going to start at verse 12. Colossians, the third chapter. And we're going to start at verse 12. Colossians 3 and verse 12. Whenever you get there, my brother, go ahead and read. Put on, therefore, as the elect of, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, mm. kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Go ahead. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Go ahead. And above all these things, put on charity. Which is the bond of perfectness. Now you seeing these? Are you seeing these characteristics that you must have, along with keeping these laws? You must have mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. So I've noticed with Israel that we don't have a problem. Coming to the ceremonial uh, uh, occasions, the days, the holy days and feast days, we don't have a problem acknowledging uh, 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 the Messiah for those that are messianic as far as New Testament. Um, we don't have an issue. Should we don't have an issue uh, uh, staying away from eating unclean animals? We don't have an issue with getting our sons circumcised on the eighth day. What people really have an issue with is mercy, long suffering, charity, forgiveness, and bearing one another's burdens, brothers and sisters, right? Humbleness of mind, kindness, and meekness. That is what people have a problem with, right? And if you pay attention to that, you'll start to see that. They don't really have a problem too much with the uh, 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 with the law, maybe the moral law, I, I can definitely see that. But if they really have a problem, which this actually will go into the moral law. They really have a problem doing this, having the fruits of the spirit. We law, law, law. We lawed up around here, but we have an issue as a people having the fruits of the spirit. That's why you sometimes will see folks talk about, well, the Sunday Christians, they seem to have the fruits of the spirit. Right? Yeah, but they still don't have the law. You have the law, but don't have the fruits of the spirit. So you have to have both brothers and sisters. And that is why the Lord said that only a remnant is going to be saved because only a remnant is going to have both brothers and sisters. Right? So we want to strive to having both the fruits of the spirit and the laws of salvation, brothers and sisters. And always, as always, I want to give all honor, praise. Verse 15. Oh, verse 15. My bad. I'm over to And bad. let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Right. And at the end of the day, the <laughs> peace of God, if you do all of these things, if you have these characteristics that I just named, that are really just specified, coming from the fruits of the Spirit, the peace of God will rule in your hearts, brothers and sisters, right? They, it truly will, right? I, I am a, a witness to that because I have so much peace in my heart. Even if things are chaotic around me, the peace of God is still in my heart, brothers and sisters, right? So as always, as I was saying, I like to give all honor, praise, and glory to the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Holy One of Israel, who is Jesus. I am Cassius Israel, a.k.a. Kazak ben Yehuda. I represent the walls of Jericho, biblical and historical studies, Hebrews in the hood, media. As always, I want to thank my reader, big homie Yurt. Peace, y'all. Shout out to my walls of Jericho brothers. And like I said, um, um, like I always say with every lesson, we are going to continue to preach this gospel because at the end of the day, all of us want to get eternal life. We definitely don't want to be in that lake of fire, brothers and sisters. Mm. So, until next time, peace. Peace.